a boxing legend, an iconic fashion designer, a mad TV mother, a real-life hero of a dad, and one of the most beloved children's authors of all time. These are the stories of the lives we lost in March 2021. Sabine Schmitz was a racing driver who became the first and only woman to win the famed German endurance race, the 24 Hours of Nürburgring. She drove the track many times for the BBC's Top Gear and became one of the show's presenters in 2016. The, the chemistry between the, the presenters is very good. We are all like, like a little family. We have a lot of fun after work. We have a beer together and talking about all that funny stuff we, we did so far. And it's amazing, you know. When do you have a chance to drive a super duper sports car next to an F-18 jet, you know? It's amazing. Schmitz was known as the queen of the Nürburgring for her love of the challenging track. She died March 16th of cancer at the age of 51. Marvelous Marvin Hagler was the middleweight boxing champion from 1980 to 1987. He successfully defended his title 12 times against boxers like Roberto Duran and Thomas Hearns. Regarded as one of boxing's all-time great middleweights, he was named Fighter of the Decade at the end of the 80s. He inspired new generations of aspiring boxers with his charity work. That's the reason why I wanted to go on some of these projects and everything. It makes you feel real good, you know, just to put a smile on that kid's face and then teach him a little bit about life. In 1982, Hagler had Marvelous legally added to his name. He died March 13th at the age of 66. Lance Waldrop was a star of the reality show Moonshiners. The show depicted the lives of backwoods distillers in the Appalachian Mountains. He died February 25th at the age of 30. His death was publicly reported in March. Henry Darrow was an actor best known for playing Manolito Montoya in the 1960s TV hit The High Chaparral. In 1983, he became the first Latino actor to play Zorro on TV when he starred in Zorro and Son. He later played Zorro's father in The New Zorro. He died March 14th at the age of 87. Mark Pavlich was one of the stars of the U.S. Olympic hockey team. He logged an assist on the game-winning goal in the legendary Miracle on Ice victory over the Soviet Union. Pavlich went on to a professional career with the New York Rangers, where he became the first and only American NHL player to score five goals in one game. He died March 4th at the age of 63. Carla Walenda was a member of the famous Flying Walendas, the family of daredevils who have been thrilling audiences for almost 100 years. She learned to walk the high wire when she was just four years old and continued until her retirement at age 81. Walenda died March 6th of natural causes at the age of 85. Roger Mudd was one of the 20th century's great TV newsmen. He was an anchor of the CBS Evening News and NBC Nightly News, as well as hosting Meet the Press and anchoring History Channel programs. In 1979, he stumped presidential hopeful Ted Kennedy with the simple question, why do you want to be president? Mudd died March 9th of complications of kidney failure at the age of 93. Bunny Whaler was one of reggae music's icons. He co-founded the Whalers along with Bob Marley and Peter Tosh, helping create enduring hits like Stir It Up, Get Up Stand Up, and I Shot the Sheriff. After leaving the Whalers in 1974, he had a Grammy-winning solo career. Whaler died March 2nd of complications of a stroke at the age of 73. Yafit Kota was one of the stars of the sci-fi classic Alien. He also made history as the first black supervillain to go up against James Bond in Live and Let Die. On TV, he starred in the acclaimed 1990s police drama Homicide, Life on the Street, Kodo died March 15th at the age of 81. Moses McCormick was better known to YouTube watchers as Lao Shu. He spoke at least 20 languages, and his viral videos showed him striking up conversations with strangers who spoke Japanese, Arabic, Mandarin, and more. 
McCormick also shared his method of learning languages by focusing on conversational phrases, which he called foreign language road running. He died March 4th of heart complications at the age of 39. Jessica McClintock was a fashion designer whose formal dresses became wildly popular at proms and weddings throughout the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. She designed under her own name as well as designing for her gunny sacks line. Her fans included Hillary Clinton, who wore a Jessica McClintock wedding dress. McClintock died February 16th of natural causes at the age of 90. Her death was publicly reported in March. Elgin Baylor was one of the early superstars of the NBA, playing for the Los Angeles Lakers from 1958 to 1971. He was an 11-time All-Star and went to eight NBA Finals. Baylor was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame in 1977. He died March 22nd of natural causes at the age of 86. Dick Hoyt became an icon of the Boston Marathon when he began racing while pushing his son, Rick, who has cerebral palsy, in a wheelchair. Known as Team Hoyt, the two ran 32 Boston Marathons and are honored with a statue near the route's starting line. Dick Hoyt died March 17th of congestive heart failure at the age of 80. Robert Ashby was a Tuskegee Airman, one of the renowned group of black pilots and support staff who served in World War II. After a 21-year career with the U.S. Air Force, he became the first black pilot for Frontier Airlines. Ashby is believed to have been the only Tuskegee Airman who became a captain for a major airline. He died March 5th at the age of 95. Jamil French was one of the stars of TV's Degrassi The Next Generation, appearing on the teen drama from 2010 through 2013. French received a Canadian Screen Awards nomination for his performance in the 2017 film Boost. He died March 1st at the age of 29. Taylor D was a rising country music star from Texas. Her singles included The Buzz, Greener Grass, and Top Shelf Liquor. Dee was nominated for a 2019 Josie Award for Best Female Vocalist of the Year. She died March 14th in a car accident at the age of 33. George Siegel was hilarious in the TV sitcoms The Goldbergs and Just Shoot Me. He was a successful actor on stage and screen for more than 60 years. In 1966, he earned an Oscar nomination for his performance in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. When I was eight years old, I mainly wanted to be a fireman. And not because I wanted to be a fireman, but that's what you said, because people would ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then I was taken to the Squire Theater in Great Neck, and they were playing this gun for hire. Higher than what? I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know what what that meant. But it starred Alan Ladd and Veronica Lake. At that time, at eight years old, I understood that that was a job that Alan Ladd had and that he went in every day, just like my father went in every day to New York for his job. And I thought to myself, and I knew it was only a dream, I wanted a job just like Alan Ladd had. Siegel's other movies include Fun with Dick and Jane, Look Who's Talking, and Flirting with Disaster. He died March 23rd of complications of bypass surgery at the age of 87. Jessica Walter played the acid-tongued matriarch Lucille Bluth on the cult favorite TV show Arrested Development. She was also the voice of a similarly snarky character, spy master Mallory Archer, in the animated spy comedy, Archer. Walter's acclaimed acting career included a Golden Globe nomination for her performance in the Clint Eastwood film Play Misty For Me, and a primetime Emmy for her starring role in Amy Prentice. She died March 24th in her sleep at the age of 80. Larry McMurtry was the Pulitzer Prize-winning author of Lonesome Dove, the 1985 novel that became a hit 1989 TV miniseries. 
Other popular screen adaptations of his books include Terms of Endearment and The Last Picture Show. McMurtry won an Academy Award for his adapted screenplay of Brokeback Mountain. He died March 25th at the age of 84. Beverly Cleary wrote children's books that were beloved by generations. Her award-winning books included the Ramona series, which focused on a rambunctious young girl named Ramona Quimby. Cleary also wrote the Henry Huggins series, as well as standalone books like Dear Mr. Henshaw and The Mouse and the Motorcycle. She died March 25th at the age of 104. <laughs>